Are you wondering about the different types of columns that you can create in monday.com? Let me show you some really, really cool columns that you probably didn't know exist. I think you're going to love these features. So let's jump in. Hi, my name is Tara and I'm a certified monday.com partner and the founder of Simple Day. My goal is to help you build powerful yet simple workflows with monday.com. If you need help with a custom implementation, my contact details are in the description below. Let's jump into today's tutorial and make Monday the best part of your week. Before we jump into showing you all the really cool columns that you may not know about within monday.com, let me just show you how you can get to the column center. So you can see here that I have a pretty basic board and I simply click the plus button. And here you can see I have the standard columns that you probably know about. Now, if I want to see more, I either can search for them here or I can hit more columns. Once I've hit more columns, I'm in the column center. And as I scroll down, you can see how many different options there are for the columns. So we're actually just going to start from the top and I'm just going to show you some really cool ones that I think you may not know about. The first thing that I want to show you is a checkbox. So if I add a checkbox to my board, I simply check the item. So it's like kind of like a yes or no. Did you do this? Did you not? And at the end, you have a sum total of all the check marks that you did. There are some settings where you can customize the color. So let's just say you want to change the color. And you can always add a description or restrict column editing or view and hide the column su summary. That's pretty standard on all columns. Okay, let's go back to our column center. So the next I want to show you is a world clock. I actually did a video on this. So if you look above, there's a link to this video, but that goes into it in more detail. But here you can see that I can set the time zone. I'm going to delete this one and let's go to the next one. So this one I find really helpful. It's called item ID. And what it does is it automatically assigns a number to a specific item. So anytime I create something, let's just create another item, you can see it automatically creates an item ID for me. So this is really great if you want to use it to specifically identify that item. I've actually used it with banks where they used it to manage loans. So this became the loan ID. You can use it for inventory. You can use it for shipping. There's a lot of use cases for this. And one of the really nice features is if you click the plus, click on it, you can automatically copy it. Let's just check out the settings. You can also customize it if you want it to be a link or an item ID. I think that is all the extra settings for that. Okay, now let's go back and see what's next. So here's a vote column. And what you can do is you can allow people to vote if they liked this or not, basically. So you can allow them vote. Again, you have your options of different colors here, but it's giving people the option to vote for something, which is a nice feature if relevant for your company. Okay, I'm just going to delete a few of these. Okay, next we have a rating column. So a rating column you can do if maybe you're sending out a survey to your clients or you want people on your team to rate something. I've seen it actually for dev teams where they want to rate the difficulty of something. And I've also used it for testimonials, surveys. So you simply can rate it five stars, as many stars as you want. And if you look at the settings, there are options to switch to hearts and you can also change the colors. And you can decide what your scale is between three, four, and five. Back to our column center. Auto number. Now what auto number does is it automatically assigns a number to the item. The thing that you need to realize about this is this is based on where the item is. So let's say client number three is in position number three. So they're marked three. If I would drag client number three up, 
the numbers reorder according to that. So I see use cases where this could be helpful, like maybe because you just want to know easily how many items are on the board, but you're not necessarily associating the item with this auto number, number actually. So it's just important to realize that. Now, I want to show you, oh, I can't add progress tracking. I will show you why. Progress tracking is one of my favorite columns. And the reason that I couldn't add it before is because you have to have a status column. So let's add this status column. And now I'm just going to search and add it here. What progress tracking does is it shows your progress based on a status column. So if I would change this to done, you can see that I'm 100% of the way completed. Now, with one status column, it doesn't necessarily give you a lot of information, but if you roll this information up to a high-level board and you can see this video linked above where you do that, that's a way to use the status column. Or if you have, sorry, the progress column, or if you have a number of status columns and you want to track it, you just need to change the settings so I'm going to use both of them and I just have to distribute the weight equally. And you can see I could just hit on this button. So now suddenly I'm at 50%. And if I do both of them, I would be at 100%. And if I would mark this, I would be this item, number three, would be at 50%. So again, the progress column, you have to have a status column, but it actually gives you a lot of information about how far you are in your tasks. Okay. The next column that I want to show you is a week column. Now what this does is it actually allows you to choose this week. So I can have items like this I have to deal with this week and this next week, which is kind of just a nice feature if you want to see your next week versus this week's tasks. You can also use a filter for this. So I haven't come across many situations where I felt that this was necessary, but it's a cool feature to know about, cool column to know about. The next one that I want to show you is hour. So hour is like the actual time. Let's just do, you know, 12 p.m. You can actually set the time. The nice thing about this column is you can set an automation that says like when item is created, set hour column to current time. So this could be really helpful if you need to know the exact time that something happens. Let's go back to the column center. The next one is a country column. So what you can actually do is you can actually pick the country column and then choose a country, which is really nice. So let's just do, I'll just do, oh, England's not going to show up. Here, the United Kingdom. And you can see that I have these flags, which is kind of make it fun that you have these different flags. And if you are using a dashboard off of this, so then you can see the flags within your dashboard. So you can have a sense, let's say how many clients per country, or I don't know, maybe you're selling properties, how many different properties per country. The next one that I want to show you is a color picker. This is really good for maybe people that are on a creative team where you can actually choose a color and let's just choose another color. You can actually add in a hex code. You do have options to change here and you save your colors. I have seen creative teams build boards where each group is a different client and they have all of their colors, or you can have like this, like client one, and then just have all of their colors because they need specific colors in their branding. When you're creating graphics for them, it's a great way to store all of the colors. The next one that I want to show you is a button. And this is actually pretty similar to a status column, but it allows you the option to have someone click on a button. Sometimes when you click on things, it feels like you're doing something. So you set it up and basically this is going to pull an automation. Like when the button is clicked, let's just say notify someone. So I'm just going to notify, you know, just do what's clicked. Obviously you would pick something that means a little more to you. And then what I can do is I can go in here on the settings and I can customize it. So let's say I want to change the color and I can change this to say, let's just say move to board. In some cases I've done where they want to move an item to another board. So they have a button and you click it. And as soon as you click it, it has a checkbox. 
Let's go back to our column center. The last thing that I want to show you, well, two more things. I want to point out that there are these templates for Monday docs that you can automatically use. So if every item you need a meeting brief, you can have or a creative brief or meeting notes, you can just have that column there and it will automatically create the document for you. The last one that I wanted to show you is actually these combos. So what the combos are is they take information from two different columns and they put it together. So I'm going to show you an example of a date column and a status column. So what this does is here you can see I have my status column and then I have a date column. So if I just add an item to my date column, you can see this little checkbox here. This actually set the item in deadline mode. So what happens, I'll just show you another example. So here you can see like this is completed. This is due in a couple of days. So therefore it's an empty circle. Let's do one that's due like tomorrow. So you can see the difference. So here it's like showing you that like time is almost running out. Make sure to do your task. And this deadline mode is A, a really nice visual, but B, then you can use it in the filter. So then I can say when date is, let's say today, tomorrow, this week, last week. And then I have the filters to further find or refine the information that I want to see based on the date. You also can set the deadline mode if I go to settings and here I have remove deadline mode. And if I want to set it, I can just set the deadline mode. I hope you enjoyed learning about all those other cool columns. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe to receive tips and tricks on how to use monday.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.